Hello and welcome back or welcome to Miss Finance. On this channel I give you additional tutorials of various aspects of the AAT curriculum and hopefully to give you a better understanding of what it is you're trying to learn and to go through various question scenarios to again better your understanding. So today we're going to have a look very quickly at ratio analysis. Now I know when I first started out in AAT this was definitely an area that I struggled with so I understand exactly what you're going through with this one. So let's start off with an easy one. So current ratio. So this is quite literally current assets divided by current liabilities. Now if you look at your statement of financial position you'll have all of your fixed assets up here and then you'll have current assets over here then you'll have your cash and then you'll get current liabilities here and then you'll have your long-term liabilities here and then your equity down here. So all you need to do is to take this figure here and this figure. Now in your exam they'll deliberately sometimes just give you say a figure for trade payables and then a figure for accrual say but they won't give you the current liabilities so you'll have to choose out of a list that are what's actually a current liability. So all you need to do is just add those up. Quite simple. Moving on. So let's have a look at days sales outstanding, otherwise known as DSO. So this is simply the average number of days that receivables remain outstanding before collection. So over here, if we get this up again, let's go. So just imagine that this is your profit and loss and this is your balance sheet in your financial statements. So again, you've got your fixed assets up here and then you've got your current assets here and in your P&L you have sales here, costs, and then profit. So what we need to do is take trade debtors, put it up here, divide that by the total revenue, which comes from here, and then divide that by the number of days in the year. So you just want to be careful here because in your example, in the actual exam, the number of days in the year might not be 365. So 365 days is a standard number of days in any given year except for a leap year, when it's 366. So presume they're gonna be 365 unless somebody tells you otherwise. So this one again is quite easy to understand and quite simple in comparison to some of the other ones. So let's move on. So let's have a look at debt to equity. So this measures the riskiness of a company's financial structure. And the way that it measures this is by looking at how much debt they have versus how much equity. And this is something that in the real world, lenders, so banks, investors, shareholders, all really want to know. And if you've got a specific loan out with a lender or say if you're a startup company and you've got a lump sum of money through, they'll want to know what this is every month. So it's something you've got to report on every month in a pack almost to them. So it's really important to learn this one. So all we do here, again, let's just make a tiny bit of room here. So all we do is take whatever the long-term debt is, 
plus any short term debt plus any leases I could have done with making that ever so slightly bigger so let's just do that quickly and all we do is just divide that by equity so again if we were to have a look at the actual balance sheet so we don't need to look at the P&L balance sheet is also known as statement of financial position so again up here we have our fixed assets we have our current assets we have cash then we'll have current liabilities non-current liabilities and equity so this equity figure down here is going at the bottom and then in this non-current liability she'll have things like your loans your leases etc so that is all of this and short-term debt is usually found in there your leases not to get into too much complication but they could be in both short-term and long-term debt so that's just something to watch out for so let's have a look at the inventory turnover so this is where we look at the average number of times in a year that a business sells and replaces its inventory so if you've got a very low turnover then this equates to a large investment in inventory whereas I, a high turnover equates to a low investment in inventory so there'll be a constant monitoring of inventory across the board so I look at goods every single month and see what's gone up, what's gone down do we need to buy more in order to have enough stock in to sell goods but you don't want stock to be there for a long time that's not going to sell and therefore go to waste so it is very important to get your head around this so all we need to do is take the cost of goods sold and divide this by the final inventory or final stock count at year end so i.e if we get our little chart out here so if we have sales up here cost of goods is here and we've got our profit here if we were to break this down even further we'd get your cost of goods sold and if we go to the balance sheet what we would have again is you'd see your assets up here and you'd see your stock here so we want to take this figure here for this and this figure here for this so i.e let's get a different colour pen so if I had five million pounds of cost of goods sold and I had two million pound of inventory at year end then I have an inventory turnover of 2.5 so let's have a look at return on assets so all this does is it calculates the ability of management to use assets in the business to create a profit so how effective is management at creating a profit from the assets that we have so if we were to have a look again here got this one the balance sheet so we've got the fixed assets here current assets here stock cash here and then over here we have our income statement so we have sales costs profit before tax and we have tax and then we have profit after tax otherwise known as PAT and all we do is take this net profit i.e. PAT and we simply divide this by total assets 
So this figure here is going here and then these here are going to make up our total assets, so our fixed assets and current assets. So they're going to go on the bottom like that. So let's just say that net profit was, again, two million pounds. And we have assets worth five million pounds. And we've also got current assets of one million pounds. Then we've got two million divided by six million which gives us 0 0.33 times by 100 gives us 33% which is pretty damn good let's do the last one which is interest cover so this one again was something that used to trick me up no end and I don't know why it did because it's actually really very easy so all it is Again, let's just get out our little PL over here. So we have our sales over here. Again, we've got cost. And then we've got operating profit. And then we have some interest. And then we've got profit before tax or PBT. And there's this thing called earnings before interest or even and all that is is taking this figure here before any interest has been calculated that's all it is and then all you do you should divide that by the interest cost so this calculation is used to see how well a firm can pay the interest on outstanding debt. Now if this figure is really low, it means that they are burdened by debt. So it means that they have to make a whole lot of profit to cover any interest. If the percentage is high, so again you times by 100 to get to your percentage, then it means that they're making good profits and they've got more than enough to cover the interest. And lenders will look at this and say that you need an interest cover of 2.1% say, or they won't lend you any more money. So that's that. So I hope you found this video useful. If, if you like the video, then please do give it a thumbs up because it helps with the YouTube algorithm. And do consider subscribing because I'll be making more videos like this in future. But otherwise, thank you for watching and I shall see you on the next video.